Hello and welcome to another in this series of tutorials for Excel beginners. In part 6 we're going to be looking at formatting and we'll complete this spreadsheet we've been working on so far. Uh, what I'll do, I'll start from the top and work down with the formatting and you'll see as we go through the different types of formatting you can apply to your spreadsheet and how easy it is to do. The first thing I want to do with this particular spreadsheet is make the title go across all the columns. And what I mean by that is I want it centered at the top of the spreadsheet rather than stuck over on the left or the right or however might might do it. Sometimes what people try and do is they'll say, oh well, I want to center it so instead of having it column A I might move it across to column B, see how that looks. But all you need to do really is use one of Excel's ingenious functions, merge and center. And to use that we just select all the columns we want the title to go across and click on the merge and center button there. So click on that and that merges those four cells, centers your title. Now then, I want to make some modifications to this as well. I'm going to change the actual font size and to do that I just click on the little drop down button there and we'll go up the font sizes. I'll just increase it, as you can see it's 10 at the moment, I'll just increase it to 14. There we go, it just makes it stand out a bit more as a title. I'm also going to make the titles in row 2 stand out a bit more and I'm going to first of all select all those and make them bold there we go so they stand out as column headers now I also want to modify the way the titles are displayed as you can see in column B rental price has been cut off so it just says rental PR at the moment you can just about see the eye and I don't want that to happen I want the column widths to say the same but I want all the text to show and to do that I go to the format menu choose cells and in this dialog box we have a number of tabs and what I need to do is click on the alignment tab there now in the alignment tab you've got a number of choices but in this case I'm just going to select wrap text first of all and you'll see what happens when I do that click OK and once I do that you can see if I just click away what's happened is the column has become, sorry, the row has become a bit wider and the reason for that is the rental price is now taking up two lines instead of one so Excel has wrapped the text around onto a new line I'm also going to do a little bit more modification on that if I select those four cells again go back to format, choose cells now I want that text to be aligned in the center of both the vertical and uh, horizontal axes and so if I go to my dialog box again make sure alignment selected on the horizontal drop down box choose center and on the vertical drop down box also choose center and click OK and you'll see that centers the text vertically and horizontally so it's bang in the middle of the cell which is just what I wanted OK let's move down then to the main spreadsheet now I don't want to do too much formatting here but the only issue possibly is as you see when I formatted these cells for currency um, I put the currency symbol next to the number the only thing you might consider doing and I will change it here is to change to accounting format and what that does it positions the currency symbol on the left of the cell and the currency value on the right of the cell so there's a, there's a gap between the currency symbol and the actual value depending on the width of the column obviously and I'll just illustrate that if I just select all the values in rental price I'll, I can use the, the currency button but I'll just show you the menu option instead here uh, if we go to format cells go to number tab and this time select accounting in the category column and make sure that the sample is exactly what you want now the odd thing here is it doesn't really show you what you're going to get and I'll just illustrate that when I click OK you see here in the sample the currency symbol is actually next to the number that isn't what will happen when I click OK as you will see so if I click OK the currency symbol jumps to the left of the column and the number is now over on the right which is what I want to happen it just sometimes looks a bit neater but the option is yours depending on what you want to do so I'll do the same thing in the income column select those values there go to format cells select accounting check that the, the symbol looks okay with the number of decimal places and the symbol is okay click okay there and again that aligns the currency symbols down the left and the values down the right and I can actually apply that formatting to the rest of my spreadsheet if I select any one of these values that's already got the formatting on so just pick one at random 
I can then use the Format Painter tool. And if I double click on the Format Painter tool, which I have done there, that will lock it, so it'll switch it on and leave it on. So I can now come down to the currency values for average, maximum, and minimum, and just select those three. That'll apply that formatting. And as you see, the little painter brush is still next to my uh, mouse pointer, which means that the Format Painter is still switched on. And I can then select the four cells in column D for total, average, maximum, minimum, release the mouse button, and it applies the same format in there as well. That's exactly what I want. To switch off the Format Painter, I can either click the button again, or I can press the Escape key. So in this case, I'll just click the button again, and that switches off the Format Paint. OK, so what we're going to have so far, we have the spreadsheet looking a bit nicer. We have the, the rental values all nice and centered. I'm quite happy with that. Um, we've got the pricing or the currency values all formatted correctly as I want. And what I'm going to do now, I'll tell you what, I'll just apply bold formatting to these labels here as well. So just select those values there, all those labels. Click on the B for bold, and that tidies those up. So the next thing I'm going to do is apply the, um, the, the color formatting. Okay, now, when it comes to colors, there's all sorts of things you can do, obviously. Um, the temptation is to color your spreadsheet in sort of a uh, technicolor style and all sorts of um, weird and wonderful colors. But this is where you have to consider who will be looking at the spreadsheet, what those colors mean, and are you going to print the spreadsheet, or will it just be a screen display? And you have to consider things like contrast as well. So if you have too dark colors for text and background, then it doesn't print so well. I'll just go through and show you some examples of what I mean. Now, I'll show you a little trick here when it comes to applying background cell colors. If you come over to the the fill color option, you see, the, by the way, the border, fill color, and font color options are over on the right-hand side of the format toolbar. If you click on that drop-down arrow there, it opens up the color palette. Now, a little trick you can use, there's a thin bar at the top of that color palette. And as you see, it pops up a little tooltip to say drag to make this menu float. Which Microsoft, what they mean by that is if you click and drag, you can then drag your color palette onto the screen and it stays on, which is fantastic. What that means is we can experiment then, we can try different colors out without having to go backwards and forwards and clicking the drop down arrow. So I'll show you some examples of what I mean about choosing the right colors. Um, I'll just first of all color in my Fred's Video Classics title. So I'm going to select that, and I want it to be a pale green, and I'm happy with the black text. Now, next, I will select the titles, or the column headings in row 2. And let's say I wanted something like a dark blue for that background. There we go. Now, there's a problem there. If I just click away, you'll see that straight away that the black isn't really showing up well on the dark blue. Um, so what am I on the screen? It's okay, you can read it. But if I print to that, it becomes a problem. Um, the contrast might be such that it's difficult to read the title on the background. So instead, really, I need a lighter background color. And what I'll choose here is actually the grey color. So I'll just reselect those cells. As you can see, it's nice that I don't have to go back to the drop-down menu. I can simply choose another color. Um, in fact, I might actually choose this blue here. It's light turquoise. There we go. That's actually a lot better. It looks good on the screen, and when I print that as well, the contrast will be perfectly fine, so people will be able to read it. And if I print in black and white, the background will simply show as a light grey, which is fine. Okay, now, um, as far as the main sheet's concerned, I'm not too bothered about formatting with the colours. Um, the only thing I might do here is just highlight these two total values, and put a light green on that as well. And that'll do a thing for uh, background cell color. Obviously, you can you can experiment it will, you, but you see now where the colors are, how to get them on the screen. Now, once I'm finished with the fill color, I can simply close that little dialog by clicking the X there, and that closes that down. That concludes this part of the formatting tutorial. If you'd like to go and have a look at tutorial number seven, we'll conclude the formatting on this spreadsheet and introduce a few other things, including conditional formatting. So, thank you for watching, and see you next time.